Hello folks and welcome. So Linux Mint 21.2 XFCE Desktop, XFCE Desktop. I made several videos so far talking about the advanced Linux kernel. I thought I'd do one for XFCE also. So I've done one for Cinnamon and also Mate for the 6.2 series kernel and you can do the same here rather easily. You can upgrade your 5.1.5 to a 6.2 and I'll talk about maybe the reasons why or why not in a second. But in either case, I'll walk you through the whole process. You can um, also think about it this way. You can always revert back to the previous kernel and I'll walk you through all the steps. So I am uh, gonna go through the preliminaries first, filming in 1920 by 1080. So you can adjust your YouTube player accordingly if necessary with that gear symbol because a lot of the YouTube players um, resort back to a 460, which is a lot less screen res than I'm filming in. I do encourage that you subscribe. I have over 230 videos on my YouTube site on all kinds of tips and tricks on all kinds of material, actually. And if you're fairly new to Mint or Linux in general, special welcome to you. I will um, just point out the fact if you don't know how to do keyword searches, I, if you look in my community tab, there is a tip in there on how to do keyword searches because all of my videos are keyword indexed. All my videos also have timelines and chapters. And uh, you may want to take a peek at the about section too. I have some extra links. Well, now that I got the preliminaries out of the way, how do we check for the Linux kernel? So open up your Mint menu and type in SY for system reports. This is one way. Click the center section. So the first thing you'll see is system and then kernel, Linux kernel. And that's the number that you're currently running. As you can see, mine says 6.2, blah, blah, blah. All right, there's another way of doing it. I'm going to open up Terminal, and I'm going to use INXI, and I will make this larger for you. Hopefully this is large enough. And I will center this, scroll to the top. This is Linux Mint 21.2 Victoria, the XFCE desktop 418.1. It's uh, normally uses a 515 series kernel. I have a 6.2, as you can see. I'm going to use Alt and F4 to close that. So where exactly is the kernel found and why do I need it? And, and do I want it? Well, let's talk about the why and maybe not. So are you currently on XFCE Mint? If you are, is everything working? You probably don't need to upgrade your kernel. Maybe you are running a tower computer and you added a new toy. You added a touchpad, whatever it might be. And you're wondering how and why the thing doesn't work. Well, maybe you want to try a newer kernel. You can always revert back to your previous kernel. I'm going to show you all that in this video. You're doing an installation. Uh, the thing has a touchpad also, just another hypothetical. And uh, you boot up Linux Mint 21.2 XFC and it does recognize your touchpad during the live copy. Well, may I suggest that you plug in a USB base mouse or wired and finish the install and then upgrade to the current uh, 6.2 then try a touchpad. So some of those examples. All right, so moving along, I'm going to basically show you how to do this, how to install it, how to possibly reboot to the previous kernel and also uninstall the 6.2 in case you don't want it. The kernel is located underneath that shield. What I mean by that is just click this open. So it's in here on your Cinnamon desktop, your Mate and XFCE. LMDE6 does not have this category, by the way. The update manager looks the same in that one also. So may I suggest that you do at least check your snapshots. It's not necessary because you can boot into your previous kernel, but it wouldn't be a bad idea to at least make sure that number one, your time shift tool is running and maybe just take a quick snapshot. So let's talk about that. So you click that and it does say time shift on it. You can find that in the Mint menu also. Log in here for a second. Make sure that shield is green. If not, go through the wizard. So this is using rsync by default. rsync stands for remote sync. I also have tons of videos on my YouTube site regarding rsync. Using rsync with script files and also using grsync. There are lots of ways to update things. 
So Linux Mint is using rsync here to copy your system files for backups, just in case you can't log in later on. So if you want to force a backup, you just do the create thing. That's how I did this one. Okay, there's an update here. It was done six minutes ago, as a matter of fact. I'll spread this back out. So uh, under default conditions, I don't really boot into this constantly because these are all demo hard drives. That's why there's a gap in here. But more importantly, you can create a backup in a hurry. And uh, a lot of people have this misconception that uh, time shift is making copies of their home folders. It's not. It's excluded by default. It's excluded by default. I'm saying that again. Whatever the name of your user is. That is why I make mention of backups. You also have a backup tool in here for standard home folder backup stuff. You also can use rsync. You can use lucky backup, which also uses rsync. There's all kinds of options you have. This is doing your system backups, your system files. The time shift utility is found on all of the installation media, on all of the Mint, a Cinnamon, Mate, XFCE, and LMDE6 also. So it'll save you your bacon someday. And you can use time shift on your live media, by the way, and it'll scan your hard drive. Click and do a restore instead of reinstalling all your applications. Someday, you may thank me for making mention of that. So um, let's talk about View, Linux kernels. Do you have a smartphone? Maybe a good idea to take a picture of this. If not, digital camera. If not, use the screenshot tool they have built into Mint. And if, hopefully you have a spare USB stick that you can throw that screenshot onto and save it somewhere else, just in case you can't boot. All right, so holding down the shift key during a reboot will get you, get you into the Mint boot screen and allow you to hit advanced options under most conditions if you have more than one Linux kernel installed. That way you can drop down to the previous kernel and boot into that one in case the current one you installed didn't work. That's the whole purpose of this. And that's the whole purpose of my mentioning this exercise. Sometimes you may have to just repeatedly hit the shift key. So let's talk about the Linux kernels now, now that you understand this message. All right, so first of all, you have three categories. You will have a 6.2 series. Linux Mint put that there already for you. You may not just be aware of it. So most of you folks are booted into a 5.1.5, whatever this line says. You can see mine says 6.2. What that means is not only is this active, but it's installed also. How do you install a 6.2 series kernel? Click that and hit the install key. Allow it to fully install. Even though you got this, close the screen afterwards. Afterwards, And uh, I have a dedicated restart key, but maybe you don't because maybe you didn't see my videos on how to add these. So we'll do it the old fashioned way. Restart your machine. Allow it to fully boot. Click in the menu and type in SY and look at your system report and see what this says. If you're on 6.2, it's already running. Now walk, take a look at your shield. Does it need some more updates? You may have another reference to a kernel in here. Also perform that and do the install and do another reboot if that's the case. Okay, so hopefully that was understood. Now, since I already did all the complete install, I can always use the shift key to get into my previous kernel by doing this. That's the whole reason I make mention of this stop right here. Okay, so I'm gonna do the continue thing. So that one is installed. However, these are also installed, but they're not running. The 5.19, we're not gonna worry about their end of life. So we're really only talking about 5.15 and 6.2. So this is the lowest kernel. This is a higher kernel. This is a more stable kernel. This one is a newer kernel. It, it can accommodate for newer hardware if you want to think about it that way. You don't like the 6.2 kernel. You've already upgraded and something is not right. Well, guess what? Then go back and follow this procedure right here during the reboot. Hold down that shift key, do the advanced option, click on your previous kernel, allow it to fully boot into here, and when you click on the 6.2, you will have this where it's gray 
and you can remove it if you want to do that. Okay, that's in case you want to remove the kernel. Because you can't remove a kernel that's booted in or logged in or active. All right, with that said, you also see I have several installed kernels here. One, two, three, four, five, six. If you're going to manually remove these things, I would not remove all of them. I would at a bare minimum, bare minimum, have at least one, if not two installed. You can get rid of this one, this one, this one, and this one. If you wanting to remove them. If you have plenty of room on your drive, don't worry about it. There's also an automated tool under edit, under preferences, under automation. Just make sure that your time shift, which again is called system snapshot, is properly configured. In other words, turned on. So mine is. So when you turn this on, it'll ask you for your password. What this is going to do is, is on a weekly basis is to remove obsolete kernels and dependencies. The option always leaves one older kernel installed, never removes manually installed kernels. Just make sure you understand that one. You don't have to use this. I'm just showing you that as an option. Anytime you exit a screen like that, it's going to check for updates. Okay. You can also right click on this icon and do a refresh and it'll check for updates. Thank you for watching.